As a mentor, it is imperative that you give your mentee or mentees something to think about. Today is one of those days for you, Eli, and everybody else. Stay tuned. Hello again, everyone. I'm Eli's dad with Project Eli, where we educate, we lead, and we inspire. And I was looking up something because of, of a video I wanted to make based upon, you know, hey, don't listen to the outside noise, keep your focus. And I ran across a number of really neat little sayings, some of which, you know, I'll know, I know who the author is and I will, you know, give credit where credit is due. Others, I just have the saying, and I want you to listen to these and I want you to think about them. I'll add, a, 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 you know, a, my two cents here and there. But most of all, I want you to do some serious thinking. First one, especially in this year of the pandemic, the fact that you're still here is proof that whatever tried to beat you lost. Next one, don't underestimate me. I know more than I say, think more than I speak, and notice more than you realize. And Eli, this is one directed especially at you when you think you're fooling dad or mom. Guess what? We've been there. We've done that. We just don't always say it. We think it, but we don't always say it. Instead of wondering when your next vacation is, maybe you should set up a life that you don't need to escape from. And that's from Seth Godin. Think about that. If all you're doing at work is thinking about how the heck can I get out of here, or, or boy, I can't wait till five o'clock, or I can't wait till the bell rings, or whatever, then maybe you need to do some thinking about what your major focus is on the business side of the balance sheet. Because what you do work-wise is where you spend most of your life. And if you want to live life and not just exist in life, you need to be doing something where you're adding value and receiving value simultaneously. The couple that are meant to be are the ones that go through everything that is meant to tear them apart and come out even stronger. Wow. You know, there's a lot of people that just get on the train that's, you know, that's the winning train. They hop on the bandwagon, as they say. When you're picking your life partner, you want to be there for better or for worse, and you want to stick together. Keep that in mind, Eli. Trust me, it's critical. Out of your vulnerabilities will come your strength. That's from Sigmund Freud. You know, think about people that overcome. They're able to overcome their weaknesses, their vulnerabilities, the ones that you know, when, when people, when you're good at something, it comes easily. And when you're not so good at something, it doesn't come quite so easily. And the ones that make it to the next level are the ones that overcome those vulnerabilities. No relationship is all sunshine. But two people can share one umbrella and survive the storm together. If that's not a lesson that we learned this past year with the pandemic, my goodness, that's a positive thing. When things are really, really tough, it's time to throw away the partisanship and say, you know what, we need to lock arms and work together because we have a cause that is bigger than both of us. Your brain is more active during the night than it is during the day. We're speaking to the subconscious mind versus the conscious mind Keep that in mind, folks, as you're going to, to sleep. Make sure you plant that seed in your brain because your brain continues to work. It works even harder while you're sleeping than when you're awake. On a team, it's not the strength of the individual players, but it is the strength of the unit and how they all function together. And that's Bill Belichick, coach of the New England Patriots. I don't know, someone that's had a little bit of success maybe knows a little something 
about team play. A candle loses nothing by lighting a, another candle. You're there to help other people. You're here to add value. And when you do that, you don't lose, you gain. Eli, this one's for you again. Respect your parents because they pass school without Google. So before you had all these technological advantages, guess what? We had to really roll up our sleeves and get to work. You can't be nice all the time. Sometimes you just need to do the right things, not nice things. Sometimes when we as parents say no to our kids, I want this, I need that, I need that, okay, which is the biggest selling uh, source that kids use. I need that, I need 10 lightsabers, all right? Well, sometimes you've got to do, you know, you can't just do the nice thing, you've got to do the thing that is going to help that person because they don't have the vision to see long term because you have the experience to know that they're going to be hurting themselves in the long run. The one that I think of the most is one of uh, my ex-wife's relatives was, you know, worked really hard to get on the wrestling team. He was overweight, he worked really hard, we were really proud of him. And then he quit like the second year and I said to, you know, my wife at the time, I said, that's the biggest mistake that they can make is to let him quit that. You've got to stick with it. You can't just do things when it's easy to do them. And you've got to, because then you start setting up a blueprint for quitting when something becomes difficult. Think about that. Life is what happens to you while you're looking at your smartphone. I'm just going to leave that there. You think of, your, think of that on your own. Reset, readjust, restart, refocus as many times as you need to. Once again, the definition of persistence. Jealousy comes from counting others' blessings instead of your own. Always remember there's somebody worse off than you are. Be grateful for what you have and don't be jealous of other people because they have a little bit more or that you perceive that they have a little bit more most of the time, to be candid with you, they don't. You miss 100% of the shots that you don't take. That's Wayne Gretzky, the hockey player. Wow. Once again, if you don't give it a shot, you can't ever succeed. So stop procrastinating and go for it. Yes, I made mistakes. Life doesn't come with instructions. Nobody's perfect. Everybody makes mistakes. Forgive other people their trespasses when you can, as often as you can. And remember, you make mistakes too, so treat other people the way you would want to be treated yourself. Stop watering the weeds in your life and start watering the flowers. Once again, don't focus on the things you can't do, focus on the things you can do and really work hard on those. The cost of not following your heart is spending the rest of your life wishing that you had. When people are interviewed at the end of their lives, their biggest regrets are always the things that they didn't do, that they thought about doing, that they wish they would have done, and not things that they did and failed at. Keep that in mind. Be sure to taste your words before you spit them out. You know what? Once again, you have don't make the shortest distance in the world the distance from your brain to your mouth. Give what you're going to say some thought. Put yourself in the other person's shoes. How are they going to take what you're about to say? Taste it before you spit it out. Treat a person as he is and he will remain as he is. Treat him as what he could be and he will become what he should be. That's from football coach Jimmy Johnson. I love that one. One of the things that my mentors always did was they didn't look at me and say, okay, Eli's dad, this is the level you have. 
They looked at me and they said, Eli's dad, this is the level where you can become. That's where I'm going. That's where our relationship is going to be based. I expect that you are going to go to that level. And when you do that, in most cases, those are the results that you're going to be able to get. Tell the negative committee that meets in your head to sit down and shut up, Kathy Kendall. Nobody likes somebody negative, be positive. We've gone over that ad nauseum, be positive. If you're not all in, you're all out. When you have a particular focus and you're all in on it, everything around you starts to relate to that. If you are meandering from thing to thing to thing, you never get really good at any one thing. There's no such thing as, you know, being a jack of all trades. You want to be a specialist. That's from Chris Lee, who's a coach, and it's critical. That's why they say if you want to make sure that you win the war, burn the boats, because then there's no alternative. We have to win the war or we're not going to survive. So burn your boats. Lack of planning on your part does not create an emergency on my part. Life by the yard is hard. By the inch, it's a cinch. Break down your issues. Break down your challenges into their smallest components. Get to a starting line. Conquer that starting line. You get to a new roadblock, new starting line. Repeat over and over and over again. Work by the inch, not by the yard. Our program here is built on competition and improving every day. It is not built on excuses. Bill Belichick. Are you somebody that always blames the outside circumstances for what you can or cannot accomplish? Because when you accomplish something, then you have to say, well, it's because of the circumstances with this. Instead, what do you say? It's because, well, I did this and I did that. It works both ways. And if you want to be a winner, and Bill Belichick knows a little something about being a winner, get rid of the excuses and move forward. Improve every day and compete every day. Eli, this last one is especially for you. Don't be so serious. If you can't laugh at yourself, call me. I'll laugh at you. And once again, always remember, let's not ration the passion, let's fashion the passion. I'm Eli's dad.